inside the tiny world of microchips. A computer chip, commonly referred to as a silicon microchip, is an extremely small electrical device that can both store process data. They have power over everything, from digital cameras and medical devices to electric appliances and business machinery. They turn all of this information, which could be as simple as a digital picture or as a complex as a complete movie, into a product that can be utilized. We are utilizing the most recent advances in microchip technology each time you send or enter data on your computer. This allows your data to be processed and sent across the internet or within your office building. However, where are these chips manufactured? How are they put together? This essay will work you through the process of producing this vital goods, which keep us connected and inform on a regular basis. The creation of microchips requires hundreds of different phases and can take as long as four months from the beginning of design to the end of mass production. Robots move, the chip makers precious wafers from machine to machine, while the air quality and temperature in the clean rooms of the chip makers Fabs, fabrication facilities, are kept under strict supervision. The production of computer chips takes place using a method known as a semiconductor manufacturing. Semiconductors are materials that conduct electricity and can be divided into two primary types, germanium and silicon, the former of which is used for the production of computer chips. In this video, we compile the steps and how the computer chips are made. Make sure to like and subscribe for more. A computer chip, often called as integrated circuit, is a small semiconductor-based circuit that performs one or more specific tasks. Silicon is a predominant semiconductor material. Sand silicon dioxide, the main material in computer chips. These materials are fit to their unique features. Gate electrode voltage activation initiates electron transport from the source to the drain of the transistor. Before the transistor is activated, current cannot flow through an insulator. When activated, the transistor takes on the role of a conductor, permitting electrical current to pass across it. No current will flow through the device unless a voltage is provided to the gate electrode. When the current reaches the drain, the gate electrode cuts it all off. In other words, it does not interrupt the flow of a current in the middle of a circuit. The first step is to begin with the sand, which should be washed and screened before delivery. Sand composed primarily of silica is processed into an electronic-grade form of silicon, which is then utilized in the production of microchips. In order to begin the process of fabricating a computer chip, a specific type of sand known as silica sand is required. This type of sand is composed of silicon dioxide. Silicon, which serve as the foundation of component of the creation of semiconductors, must be in its purest form before it can be used in the production process. Step 2. Cleansed in order to obtain an ingot of silicon. A chunk of exceptionally pure silicon that has been grown in a controlled environment and shaped into a cylindrical block is called a silicon ingot. A series of purification and filtering processes are required to generate silicon and an electronic-grade quality, which must have a purity level of 99.9999%. The material is subsequently sliced into rectangular wafers, which are the precursors to computer chips. The final application determines not just the size, but also the shape of the wafer. In order to ensure that electrical impulses can move freely across its surface without being disrupted, the rough edges are removed and the surface is made absolutely flat. Cutting the wafers is step 3. The next thing that needs to be done is to cut the circular ingot of silicon into wafers. In order to build a computer chip, chip manufacturers begin by reducing the size of silicon wafers to their required dimensions. After that, the wafers go through a cleaning and polishing step before going through any additional processing. After being cut, they go through a series of operations that add layers of different materials to the surface of the die. 
After this, the dye is ready to be used. These layers are used for a variety of functions, including the creation of electrical pathways, the isolation of individual portions of a chip. Photolithography is the fourth step. After that, a layer of photoresist is applied in a very thin layer all over the wafer. In photolithography, a pattern is transferred into a substrate using a light-sensitive substance. This process is known as exposing the design. The first thing that needs to be done is to cover the substrate with a photoresist, which is a substance that is light-sensitive. After that, a mask containing the desired pattern is placed over the wafer before it is illuminated by night. Next, the sections of the photoresist that were exposed to the light are developed which produces apertures in the resist that are shaped in accordance with the design that was wanted. The pattern is subsequently transferred into the substrate that lies beneath the wafer, which is accomplished by etching the wafer. Ions and doping is the fifth step. After the exposed photoresist has been removed, the next step is a process is called doping, and it consists of blasting the silicon wafer with ions to modify its conductivity. Following the removal of any remaining photoresists, a pattern of damage in unaffected material is revealed. Etching is the sixth step. The application of reactive chemicals results in the removal of a very thin layer of silicon from the surface. There are a few various ways to apply them, and it all depends on how far below the surface you want them to penetrate. If you want to get rid of a significant amount of material, you should leave the chemicals on for extended periods of time so that they can build up their concentration. Engineers are able to design more complicated patterns for a variety of components, such as memory chips and CPUs by repeatedly etching and re-imaging the surface of component. The pattern that is left behind after an etching procedure is referred to as a mask, and it is the pattern that determines the form and functionality of a chip. Photoresists are the materials that are used to construct the mask. These are materials that may be chemically altered in order to create a pattern on a surface. Electroplating is the seventh step. An insulating layer is applied on top of the nearly finished transistor. After the additional copper has been removed from the holes in the insulating layer, there are only three copper deposits left in those holes. Step 8. Adding interconnects to the layers. Our electronic devices are powered by computer microchips, which are composed of multiple layers of interconnects. Each of it is only a few atoms thick. Interconnects are typically constructed out of metal wires and are used to connect various kinds of electrical components. Each wire serves a distinct purpose, and those functions are all designed to be compatible with one another so that the wires can talk to one another. Since each transistor is now interconnected, the chip is able to carry out operations that are similar to those of a processor. Step 9. Test and Slice Die The wafer is then sliced into tiny squares, which are referred to as die. Every die has millions of transistors packed into it. After passing inspection, the dies are cut into individual chips to be used. After that, the chips are placed in packaging and sent out to be used in computers. Step 10. Packaging a substrate and a heat spreader are included in the packing of the dyes, and the dyes themselves take on the familiar form of a desktop central processing unit, or CPU. The heat spreader positioned on top of the silicon is responsible for transferring heat away from the silicon and into the heat sink below it. After that, processors are put through a battery of tests that evaluate their power consumption maximum frequency, and other performance metrics. The most advanced chips can have as many as 100 layers, all of which have to be aligned on top of each other with a precision of 1 nanometer or less. This process is known as overlay. Because of the size of the features that are printed on the chip, 
changes depending on the layer. Different kinds of lithography technologies have to be employed for the various layers that make up the chip. Chip manufacturers take great care to ensure that their manufacturing facilities are spotless, since even the tiniest particle of dirt or other foreign material that makes its way into the wafer might render the microchip useless. How spotless is it? Approximately 10,000 times less polluted than the air outside. The majority of chip manufacturers have clean rooms that are classified as ISO Class 1 and have a zero-dust policy. This means that there are less than 10 particles between 100 and 200 nm in size for every cubic meter of air, and there are no particles larger than 200 nm. In contrast, a sterile and up-to-date hospital typically has approximately 10,000 dust particles per cubic meter. Employees in a clean room are required to wear a specialized clothing, also known as bunny suits, and the air inside the room is constantly filtered and recirculated. This helps to keep the air as free of particles as possible. What are your thoughts in making microchips? Did you find it a little too complicated? Like this video and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more. Until the next one.